you go onto the street and you ask the question of which is better for the environment, a paper cup or a similar sized foam cup, the answer would always be the paper cup. And interestingly, when you say people they're wrong, they get a very big surprise on their face and then you have to explain. And the simple reality is, is if you weigh this and you weigh this, this is a lot less in weight. Just to start there, we'll tell you that there are less resources here to start with. This is actually 96% air. The main problem at the moment is that for the many of the commodity polymers, they end up in the environment in places like waste streams, um, and uh, they are very slow to degrade. Uh, most of the commodity polymers are in fact uh, designed to degrade very, very slowly. If you think about your supermarket bag, um, you don't want it to, uh, to degrade on the way home uh, with your shopping in it. Clearly its lifetime has to be longer than that. And I guess unfortunately for the environment, many of our commodity polymers uh, have very, very long lifetimes uh, in the environment. So if they're misused in any way, they end up in, in streams or at the roadside or in other places where we don't want them to be and cause problems. So yes, any product that, that is uh, able to be uh, engineered where we can control the lifetime uh, of the material and in fact uh, so that we get to use it and, and it and it behaves in the way that we uh, want it to behave, it does all the things that we're, we're used to and we expect of it and then when we dispose of it um, it can degrade fairly quickly and get out of, the, out of, the, out of our sight, as it were, uh, and in the process produce something that's useful and in the process not uh, contribute to greenhouse uh, uh, gas emission, then that would be something that would be highly desirable. Well, we moved into our current premises here at North Rocks in 1978. And I remember as a kid, you know, that'd be a great place for an indoor cricket centre or a a go-kart track, uh, we had lots of room. We bought four foam cut machines in the early 80s and then within six months we had 50% of the Australian market and then things have gone from there into the plastic cups, plates, lids, bakery containers uh, to, where, to what we do now. We asked Dr Michelle if we could make a foam cup biodegradable because that had never been thought of in the past. Uh, Victoria University, like many other universities uh, in Australia, um, work uh, in strategic partnerships with industry to try and develop innovative uh, new technologies and this is one such example where we've started off at a, a very early stage in the development of the technology and we are uh, in the process of, uh, of, of seeing that through. It was Dr Michelle Lefebvre and he, he's, been a, he's an adjunct of our institute and he came to us with, a, with an idea from, from Rima to, to test some biodegradable um, plastics that they had produced. And so we, we agreed to set up the, the test um, apparatus and it went from there. In the test that we initially set up, we had some, um, I think it was some high impact polystyrene lids and we were looking at the, the gases that were being produced from there. Then we moved on to the, high, uh, the, the EPS, which is the extend, expanded uh, polystyrene foam cups, and we tested those, and we also tested some, um, uh, some other commercial products, and we found that the Rima product was producing a biogas, um, and the, the, the control product didn't produce any a significant quantity of gas. My background uh, is in polymer degradation and more recently uh, I've become interested in, uh, in biodegradation. It's only fairly recently with the focus on uh, the environment that we're now starting to look uh, at uh, studying more closely uh, bio biodegradation of polymers and in particular looking at the rates at which uh, polymers uh, degrade. This is some high impact polystyrene lids for um, beverage cups. So what we do with this is we take 15 grams of this sample, cut up into regular pieces. We put that inside our vessel, which contains the inoculum. We mix it together and then we add it into the vessel. We seal the vessel with a, uh, a rubber stopper. The inoculum and the vessels go inside the oven here. 
we have the plastic tubing which is coming out of the oven and that's where we're collecting the biogas. So we've got these non-return valves here so the, the gas can only come out one way, can't go back in. And we're collecting the gas that's being produced inside these plastic bags here. So these are uh, oxygen proof bags and then we've sealed them at one end and we've got the inlet from the, the tubing going inside there and we're collecting the gas. So these this is a double blind study so we have six sets of samples and we, we don't know what, what they, these samples are and we can see that already we've got some gas being produced in uh, bags one and four and we would be expecting gas to be produced in the other um, bags shortly. And I guess it's tr true to say that we're just at the beginning of the, of the, uh, of the science now, at the beginning of the journey really, to, uh, to be able to measure more accurately the, uh, the rates at which uh, polymers biodegrade and the conditions under which they uh, most effectively biodegrade to produce uh, products that are uh, useful to us, like for example meat. Biorene is, is a technology, it's also a product range so that we've developed in, in REMA over the last two or three years and what it is is we can take most common plastics and in fact most people would understand this as a polystyrene cup and we can add something to it which is an organic compound and that organic compound allows this product when it's disposed of in a normal waste stream and basically over a period of time and that time is measured in, in, in years, not even tens of years, less than tens of years to, to break down into components that are quite different to what you're looking at now. And those components are what we would call humus, or in fact, something along the lines of indistinguishable from soil. Also, the other thing it would break down would be what we call biogas. So biogas is carbon dioxide and methane. There's various gases that, uh, that can be produced, predominantly carbon dioxide and methane. And the, uh, and the object of, uh, uh, of the exercise is to uh, measure the relative proportions of those and if uh, all goes according to plan then there would be uh, hopefully more methane than there would be carbon dioxide. So what will happen is the microbial activity will occur, it will uh, break down the polymer eventually uh, over a period of time. As it's doing that it's producing methane and carbon dioxide I guess. Preferably it's more methane than, um, than carbon dioxide and it will be left with, with just soil and then the gas that's collected. And what our competitors say that it can't be done because they can't, they, they haven't got a solution for it. Just a simple additive, which we call dust. Mm -hmm.